Okay. So 2009, there was the Captain Phillips yes. uh, incident, mm-hmm. which a movie got made later on mm-hmm. with, was it Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks, yeah. Okay. Great movie, by the way. Tell me about what led up to this. Well, the, um, the shipping companies weren't having armed guards on their ships as they crossed the Horn of Africa. So they come through the Suez Canal, go around Somalia, and they're trying to get like into uh, Kenya or whatever. And local Somalis realized that they were unarmed, so they can go take these. And they started taking these down. And the thing was, they weren't hurting anybody, and they weren't um, really terrorists. They were just criminals. But the insurance company always paid the ransom every time. So it's like, well, I live in Somalia. I'm poor. I'll go get a couple hundred thousand dollars off this gig. So they started doing it. And uh, it, it hadn't been an American until that point that Captain Richard Phillips from the Marist, Alabama got taken. And so we were, we were aware of it. Uh, but then we did get – so SEAL Team 6 is designed to rescue Americans at sea. That's what we do. That's our bread. Anything you can think of will do it. So we kind of thought it was coming. Uh, because they're going to want to rescue them. I know that some FBI guys went there. They're trying to negotiate and whatever. And then they they did make the call with us, which was which was kind of interesting because the Obama administration had just gotten in there. And so this has like never been done before. This is a ballsy call because you're in international waters. We're not at war with them. What are we going to do? So we were thinking about that. And it was actually uh, my birthday, Good Friday, April 10th, 2009. And I was at my daughter's Easter tea party at her preschool. And I was bringing her. I had a pink plate. I brought her... Um, Smiley face, cupcakes and cookies and shit. The four year olds eat, uh, and then I got a call that a cat. We're going right now, so I had to kiss her and leave. Like on a long weekend on my birthday, Good Friday, I have to kiss my daughter and go to war from a preschool classroom. Okay, so you you're part of 108 soldiers. Yeah, that went after the ship. Yes, you guys actually landed on the ship. No, uh, well, we jumped. So we we took off from Virginia. We flew right to there. So just about 16 hours, we jumped. Full head count. Um, I was a lead jumper for that, which was the which was cool because here here's what we've been training for forever. Never SEAL Team Six was commissioned in two, uh, 1980, never been done. This is 2009, and so we finally got to, so we made the but we didn't know what we were gonna do because we'd never considered a fully engulfed lifeboat being towed by a destroyer. So we didn't know what we were gonna do. We had to come up with plans. So we simply put snipers on there to watch them while we came up with a different plan, make sure nothing unsafe happens type shit. Right. So you're supposed to rescue Captain Phillips. Yes. You weren't supposed to kill the pirates. Um, no, we wanted, I mean, ideally we could say, hey, uh, we know you guys are seasick. We know you realize you screwed up. You're out of cot. You're hungry. Cot is the drug. Cot's the drug. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they would have come out, they, all they had to do was say, okay, good. And we probably would have just let them go. Um, and that was one of my plans. My plan that I came up with was uh, give them communication with their village elders. Let them talk on walkie talkies. Tell them we're going to bring them in and then bring them in as the sun's going down. Once it gets a little bit dark, turn about two miles north, jam the communications. My team of seven dudes will be on the beach. When they come out, here's the pirates. Here's And we'll say, hey, we want our guy. You can leave or we get in a gunfight and we kill him. And as we were waiting for that, I was actually drinking coffee in the chief's mess and the snipers took the shots and they told us, hey, we got him. Uh, how many pirates actually got killed? Three. Okay. I remember the pirates... Uh made a statement how upset they were. Right, really? Were they upset? Yeah, so they were, were upset. We. They basically said, no, you know, we don't kill, we just steal. It's so unfair that they I mean, killed us. I mean, it seems like a simple lesson to me. Don't fucking steal from me. I won't yeah, kill man, you. Yeah, man, listen, I had no problems with them getting killed. You go <laughs> yeah, and steal I a have, whole boat. I have not lost any sleep over that mission. <laughs> right. And I remember I interviewed uh, Eric Prince, yes. the founder yes. of Blackwater. Blackwater. Mm-hmm. And he was involved with Somalian pirates at one point. Oh, I'm sure he was, yeah. Yeah, like he actually figured out, you know, he was sending planes all around, figured out where they all lived, mm-hmm. where the boats were parked, yeah. and they basically started attacking those villages, and they got it fixed. Yeah, I'm not aware of what he... I know he's a brilliant dude. I know Blackwater's a great company. Um, I don't know what they did as far as... Because you're, you're, it's kind of dicey with international law and contractors, so I'm not aware of what they did, but... I mean, they eventually started arming people, putting them on the ships, and we haven't had a big issue with it since. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just interviewed He basically trained... 2,000 Somalis for an anti-piracy oh, yeah. operation in the Gulf of Aden. Of Aden, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, yeah, that they do. Yeah, we did a lot of that with tra- training other countries, yeah. Yeah. I just met our guys. We didn't, like, with uh, as far as black, black, Blackwater contracts in, in Iraq, I don't, I'm not aware if they did that in Somalia. Were you around Blackwater guys? Uh, I know a lot of them. I know a lot of dudes that got out to, because when 
when the wars kicked off, especially Iraq, dudes got out of the Navy and started making like $1,200 a day. That's Compared to a Navy paycheck, that's pretty big. I mean, were you around during the Nassau Square uh, massacre? No. I mean, I was in the Navy. I wasn't there for well, that. You heard about it. I'm aware of it, yeah. I, I don't mean, buy all of it. Um, I it's, mean, it's a dicey situation. Oh, it's really yeah. dicey on both sides, yeah. too. And, on and both once, sides, again, yeah. once the bullets are flying, it's, it is what it is because you can come to a point like, I'm, I don't care about policy. I care about myself and the guy next to me. Right. Um, and, and again, I mean, Al Qaeda is good enough to see that massacre. They can walk through, pick up all the 5.5 or all the 7.62 brass, and look, we didn't shoot at all. These are all 5.56. This is all bad guys, which I don't know if you know this, Al Qaeda lies to us a lot. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs>